Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on security policies and other documents. Today I'm going to be discussing some security policies, and then I will conclude with a brief discussion on other documents. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, but not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing security policies. Policies are a set of guidelines established by management that are used to set the expected behavior in the workplace. Procedures are different than policies in that a procedure is a set of steps required to be taken in a given situation. Policies and procedures work hand in hand to create a safe and secure work environment in which employees know the guidelines and what is expected of them. Policies and procedures should be given to every person on the day they start, and periodic training should be conducted to ensure that they remain fresh in everyone's mind. One of the security policies to consider is the consent to monitoring. This is a policy that establishes an employer's right to monitor the employee's actions and communications. This can include monitoring emails. If they traverse company equipment in any way, then the emails are not considered private, but are actually company assets that they have a right to view and do with as they please. These consent to monitoring policies also include the monitoring or recording of phone conversations, also monitoring activities on computers, hard drives, and phones. In a highly secure work environment, it may also include the video monitoring and recording of normal work activities. Another security policy is a clean desk policy. This is a policy that is concerned about the handling of sensitive data. Sensitive data should not be left unattended in a workplace and should be put away when not in use, not left on a desktop. These policies also include the computer desktop. Sensitive data should not be left easily accessible on the PC. Then there are recording policies. This is a policy that restricts the use of cameras, tape recorders, portable storage devices, or any other device that may be used to record or copy sensitive workplace information. Then there are equipment access policies. They're a security policy that establishes who has access to which equipment and when. These can include access to server rooms, wiring closets, network racks, or any other area that is deemed to have a security risk. There are security policies that deal with the handling of user or customer information. They're used to establish how to secure sensitive employee and customer information. User and customer information is a major target of hackers when they breach computing systems. The loss of control of this data can severely damage a company. Any policy that is used to help secure the workplace or company data is, by default, a security policy. Approximately 80% of all network and data breaches occur from within the companies that are attempting to secure the data. Sometimes they occur by mistake. However, all too often, they are intentional. All policies should have an enforcement aspect to them that details what employees should expect to happen if they violate the policy. The range of actions can be from retraining to termination and prosecution. Now let's conclude with a brief discussion on some other documents. First up is the AUP or Acceptable Use Policy. These are a set of rules and guidelines established by the creator, owner, or administrator of information systems that detail what users may or may not do with that information system. It is considered to be part of the security policy. The AUP should be fairly detailed in what is allowed or not allowed to occur. All users should be required to sign the acceptable use policy and these records should be kept on file. 
Then there are network policy documents. There are a broad range of policies that establish the guidelines for the network. They include policies that control the use and operation of the network, as well as policies on how to implement changes to it. Many security policies fall under the general network policies category. There are some standard business documents that you should be familiar with. The first one is the Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. It's an agreement between two or more organizations that detail how those organizations are to undertake a common course of action. An MOU is often used before a legally binding agreement has been created. Sometimes the MOU is called a Letter of Intent, or LOI. Then there is the Statement of Work, or the SOW. It's a detailed document that specifies what work is to be performed, the expected outcome of the work or the deliverables of the work, and the timelines to perform that work. The SOW plays an important role in project management documentation. Then there is the Master License Agreement, or the MLA. It's a legal agreement between two entities in which one agrees to pay the other for the use of a specific piece of software or a software package for a specific period of time. So the person using the software doesn't actually own the software. The creator or the vendor retains the legal rights to that software or that software package. And finally, there's the Service Level Agreement, or the SLA. It's an agreement that details the allowable amount of response time the vendor has to resolve an issue or problem. The SLA is most commonly associated with a service contract. Now that concludes this session on security policies and other documents. I briefly talked about security policies and then I concluded with a discussion on some other documents. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.